This video is something special to me and I hope that I'm gonna be able to do something a little bit special for you guys. Five years, five tips, let's go. Hey everybody, welcome back to Golf Test Dummy, the channel where I use my game to help your game. Check out the new backdrop, guys. So I reached out to some of the graphic designers at Sunday Golf because I needed to freshen up the place. I was looking for something a little more inspiring, a little more colorful to put out here as a backdrop in the lab. This week is the five year anniversary of this channel. My two best sponsors on this channel, Bionic Gloves and Sunday Golf themselves. I'm so happy for that. Thank you very much to them. Um, also, before we go too far down the rabbit hole in this video, I've got a shout out to a company who is I'm not affiliated with, but I felt like I needed to offer some kudos to them, Crocs and also Hey Dude. If any of you are fans of the Croc shoes or the Hey Dude shoes, I want you to know what a great company they really are. The, the people that I dealt with there really tried to help me out. I was looking for something special for one of my wife's nurses. It did not exist, but now it exists. It exists because somebody at Crocs, specifically Colin, cared enough to make it happen. Thanks so much to Crocs and special thanks to Colin. Much appreciated. These are five things that I feel have been the most influential. These have helped me tremendously. They have been what I've really taken away as sort of the core of what I've learned in all the different swings that I've tried, all the different methods, everything that I've been through. These five things stick with me and have helped me the most and I hope that they can help you. Number one, stop comparing yourself to pros. It's a different game. They are very super talented. They are highly coordinated, highly athletic. They've been playing since they were little fetuses. 85% of us out there, we don't have the flexibility, the athleticism, the coordination, the gifts, and also the gift of time from playing from a very young age that most of these pro golfers on the circuits today have. Stop comparing yourself to them. Stop trying to make yourself into them. A lot of the instruction that comes out today is created by studying the pro golfers, the movements that they make, and they, they say, well, all of these good golfers, all of these highly skilled golfers, not even just pros, but you know, lower level elite golfers, they study their movements and they look at their body positions and they say, well, they're all in kind of the same positions. And I would say this, they probably get into positions that 85 to 90% of us can't get into, not realistically and not over and over and not without some sort of pains and side effects. We don't have the same stuff that they have. So trying to get our bodies into those positions is just extremely difficult, if not unattainable for a great many of us. Not all, not all, but a great many of us. And I would say, that they've probably been coached in the same way from the same age since this is the predominant method of teaching and that in itself is why they all tend to have the same movements. Not that they all discovered them on their own because it was something that was almost out there like mathematics that needed to be discovered, but it's what's being taught to all of them from a very young age. This may not be the best analogy in the world, but for me, with bad knees, I don't jump very high, I don't run very fast, it would be kind of like Michael Jordan giving me tips on how to dunk like he used to back in the 90s. No, you know what, before I go on to number two, there's something else. Coaches today, most of the coaches tell us not to look at outliers like Bubba Watson or Jim Furyk or Mo Norman. They tell us not to look at them because they're outliers and they're exceptions to the rule that we need to look at the fat, the meat of the golfing population out there and copy them. Well, if you wanna talk about outliers, and exceptions, tour pros, they're the elite of the elite. The top 1%, they're outliers. Number two, good golf doesn't have to be pretty. As a matter of fact, sometimes good golf can be downright pedestrian. Pars, not so many birdies, maybe just a couple of little bogeys, but it doesn't have to involve all of these incredible shots either. Some of the best scores that I've ever shot have involved a lot of scrambling. I don't hit a lot of greens. It's just never really been my game. I'm hoping to improve on that, sure. But if I don't, maybe I just get better at scrambling. Maybe I get better at short game and putting. Maybe that helps me to make more pars. You don't have to make 
five and six birdies around to play good golf. You can go with no birdies. Just make sure you don't get a lot of bogeys and double bogeys. And when I say good golf, it's relatively speaking, of course. I'm not talking about 68, 71, 73 or 74 even. I'm talking about low single digit handicappers or even a five, six or a seven handicap. That is very respectable, good golf. And that doesn't have to involve 300 yard drives and a picture perfect swing. It can be very mundane. It can be very pedestrian and very ho-hum. It can also be very beautiful and it can be spectacular, but it doesn't have to be. Number three, you've heard me talk about on this channel quite a bit now in my last videos, uh, several videos since the beginning of the year, the four fundamentals of golf, what I'm going to talk about here is to focus on the club's movements rather than your body's movements. When you try and micromanage all of your movements, all of the complex moving parts that involve, let's be honest, every last fiber of your body, every fiber of your being physically is going to be doing something in the golf swing. Even if it's not moving, it's providing support and to try and micromanage all of these internal mechanisms and make our bodies do all of these things, it's gonna to lead to a lot of frustration for many, many golfers out there. Instead, focus on something external. Focus on the club and where it needs to be an impact. Focus on the arc that it's cutting through the, the space around you. Focus on the target. Focus on those nine panes of glass out there that Tiger Woods talks about with the different ball flights and the launch angles. Focus on anything external other than all of this in here. Once you get internal and you start trying to micromanage that, what you're essentially trying to do is take the slower part of your brain, which is your conscious mind, and you're trying to micromanage movements of thousands of little things going on at a very fast pace, I might add, when really the subconscious mind is much better at managing your physical movements. Think walking, think driving a car, think cooking, scrambling eggs, all those different things. You don't really have to think consciously about what you're doing with your wrist and arm when you're beating a bowl of eggs. You leave that up your subconscious mind. Is number four, stop. Stop listening to your ego. Stop listening to your ego when it comes to equipment. What tees you play from, what distances you hit your clubs, and especially, especially don't listen to your ego when it comes to how you look when you swing. Your swing may not look great, but if the club is moving the correct way, if you've got your low point consistent, if you've got that nice shallow descending path coming into any golf ball sitting on the turf, if you've got the face squared up to that path, if you have those things right, what you look like physically as a person swinging it, it may not look like the pros on TV. It may not even look what you would want it to look if you were able to pick and choose who you'd like to swing. Freddie Couples, Adam Scott, Tiger Woods, you know, the list goes on and on. But some of the best ball strikers, some of the best golfers ever don't really have the prettiest swings. Mo Norman, Jim Furyk, Bubba Watson, let's go. There's plenty of them out there. They don't necessarily have the best looking swings. So take what you look like out of it and just focus on trying to play good golf, especially when it comes to your equipment. There's a lot of people playing extra stiff and stiff shafts just because they think that that's what a real man is supposed to play or that's what a young virile man is supposed to play. They, they think that they can't have hybrids in their bag. They have to have two and three irons. It, all of that stuff, all of that ego-driven stuff of what is supposed to be and, and not wanting to accept who and what you really are as a golfer, it's just ridiculous and it's handicapping your game in the wrong direction. And number five, play smarter golf. I mean, instead of trying to squeeze an extra six yards out of your driver, instead of trying to chase unrealistic things, focus more on things that can actually help your game. Try and come up with new strategies for a course that you've played dozens of times. And you go out and you think, man, this course is just beating me. I can't score any lower. It just seems to always have my number. Try and rethink your strategy for that course. Think your way around the golf course like Jack Nicklaus used to. Think about everything being a pool or billiards shot. This shot sets up the next. That shot sets up the next. Try and think backwards in that way. Try anything that you can to come up with a better strategy, 
a strategy that will help you keep it in the fairway on the greens and give you shots at saving par and limiting your bad holes to bogeys instead of double bogeys. Get rid of those hero shots that are so low percentage that you're trying to pull off. And maybe you do from time to time. And the high that you get off of pulling that shot off 7% of the time, maybe that's enough to keep you hitting those crazy shots. But try and go with a more percentage shot. Learn when to take your medicine. Learn when to play back. Learn when to play a, a lesser club. Learn when to pull a hybrid and just try and get good solid contact rather than trying to pull off your best shot ever with a four iron. Learn to chip and putt very well. Learn to leave yourself in places that you're going to be able to have a better chance to get up and down with higher percentage shots rather than being short-sided behind a bunker or under a tree while a snake's chasing after you. Try to play smarter golf. Work on your strategies. Eliminate those shots. I think we'd all be very surprised at the number of just poor decisions that lead to shots. You could track them back. You go back and you say, well, I was 16 over par today. All right, of those 16 shots over par, which of those shots came from a poor decision that possibly led to another poor decision that possibly led to an impossible place where you had to play some ridiculous shot. Think back through those. See where you're really losing the strokes. Try and play smarter golf. It's really the best way for the vast majority of us out here to drop strokes. Guys, it's been five years on YouTube. I've tried a lot of different things. I've put myself through a lot of different trials and tried drills and reading and listening and watching. And I have literally seen probably more on YouTube golf than the overwhelming majority of people out here on the planet. And in that time, these are the things that I think really give value, really give value to what I've done on this channel. I feel like there are so many things that we think have to be things that really get in the way of us developing into better golfers. And I hope that some of the things that I've told you here in this video, you'll really take to heart and you'll really try your best to implement some of these and cast aside a lot of these preconceived notions of what golf should be, what it needs to look like, what it's supposed to look like, and you stop comparing yourself to people that quite frankly, are the top 0.5% of the golfing population out there. Go for the best you can be. Try and be better tomorrow than you were today. One foot in front of the other, small steps, small victories each day. Take your ego out of it. Thanks so much for joining me here. See you guys next week.